Hello and welcome! I'm Sam and you're back with another Core Electronics tutorial and today we're going to be taking a look at what is Latte Panda. Now if you've been sort of on the DIY scene you know, for a while you might have heard of the recent trend in microcomputers or microprocessors. Um, and that's largely due to the fact that technology is advancing and advancing more and more and the Raspberry Pi really started to you know, forge this trend and forge away when it was debuted in 2012. Now the Raspberry Pi is fantastic, it's one of the most popular uh, DIY, industrial, you know, maker platforms that you can get. But it's not without its limitations, it's based on ARM Cortex um, architecture, which means that whilst it runs Linux beautifully, it's not designed to run, uh, you know, your x86 um, and your x64, you know, your 32 and 64 bit uh, operating systems such as Windows. And that's just because of, a, you know, a few, uh, not limitations, but, you know, dependencies and the way that the chip is uh, designed. It's just not designed to run, you know, a desktop application like Windows. But a few of the uh, clever cookies over in Shenzhen have decided that this simply wouldn't do. So they've created the Latte Panda. Now the Latte Panda is awesome, straight up. It is fantastic. I love it so much because it is a fully fledged, fully featured Windows 10 capable desktop computer, barely the size of a credit card. It's, it's awesome. But what makes it super special is it's also got a built in uh, Arduino compatible co-processor. It's got an 80 mega 32U4 uh, chip on the other side, which it can communicate directly with the Intel Atom processor, but also can operate as a standalone chip. So if you power it up, even if you're not running anything in Windows, that chip is still gonna run exactly like a standard Arduino, which is really, really cool. So let's take a look at you know, what's on here, what makes it so awesome. So. For starters, these are uh, these super duper shiny reflective bits of metal are uh, all of the different ports that are available. Here we've got Ethernet, uh, micro SD. We've got a USB 3 connector, which is super super cool. Uh, two USB 2 connectors. We've got our HDMI, uh, micro USB for power, uh, on off and reset switches here. Then you've got uh, touch sensitive connectors here, uh, LCD connector for, you know, ribbon connectors, things like that. Uh, you've got some of these sensor pins here, and these are designed uh, to work with DF Robot sensor cables. So it's just a standard, it's not a proprietary connector, but as DF Robot uh, partnered up with the designers of this to manufacture it, uh, they, you know, they produce a lot of sensor modules which use this three pin uh, power signal ground uh, sensors. So that's why it's there, so you can really easily connect up sensor modules as you like. Now over here, you've got the pin outs for the Arduino processor. As I said, it's a 32U4 uh, processor, quite capable for the, uh, you know, the 18 mega chips. And then you've also got pin outs here using a slightly smaller form factor connector, so you can't accidentally connect stuff you're not supposed to be. You can connect directly up to the Intel Atom processor, which is really cool. So you've got pin outs you know, your GPIO, similar to the Raspberry Pi, which connect directly to the microprocessor, and also this Arduino, uh, you know, co-chip, which is super, super cool. Under here, you've got uh, the, I believe this is the flash storage in here. Uh, so you've got two different options model-wise with this board. Uh, you've got the two gigabytes of RAM with 32 gigabytes of flash storage, uh, E, uh, EMMC, I believe. Yeah, yeah, EMMC storage there. Uh, DDR3 RAM and then an, as I said, an Intel Atom Cherry Trail processor running at 1.8 gigahertz quad core. Awesome, awesome. Aboard this size, you're getting a stack of computing power. And on the other side, another magical, uh, fantastic piece of metal which hides a lot of the inner workings of this wonderful device. Yeah, it's sort of acting as a bit of a shield there. Uh, you can see, the, I think that's the top of the chip die coming up there. A few other magical bits of wizardry and circuitry. And here we are, it's fantastic. You've also got um, audio out through the 3.5mm uh, jack, which is very, very cool. Uh, I've got the Wi-Fi antenna on board here, so it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So you can plug it in and straight away you'll get your boot up into Windows. There's no configuration, there's no anything like that. It doesn't boot off an SD card. It works 
as a typical desktop computer, which is awesome. You can connect to external storage up via the, uh, the USB ports, USB 3, uh, really quick. Uh, there, it's got 500 megahertz GPU on board, so that's sort of all the tech stuff. But why it's so wonderful is that, as I said, you can plug it in and it'll just work. And straight away, you can load up the Arduino IDE um, and you select the appropriate board from uh, the Arduino IDE. It's the Leonardo board you want to select because that's the same chip, the 32U4 running on that guy. And you can program all of these in, outs, sensors, anything without any anything external. You don't need USB cable to do anything. You just plug it in and it works. It's beautiful. So I encourage you guys to pick one of these up. Uh, they're so, so, so awesome and we'll be doing some more tutorials on getting these set up with the Arduino IDE, uh, looking at some of the extra features and functionality in those. But that's all for today guys. Hopefully this has given you a good insight into Latte Panda and why it's one of my favourite platforms to tinker with at the moment. So I'll see you next time. Have a great day.